What's up, everyone? Welcome to Locked In. I am Jelenies, and this is the weekly show where we talk about deadlock, all things deadlock, patches, note changes, whatever else that comes up. But with me, I've also got the Viking Jedi and Mangoose. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Much appreciated. Glad to have you guys here again for our second week. But let's go through intros. Viking, you first, and then a Mangoose right there afterwards. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm the Viking Jedi. Uh, I don't have a cool YouTube entrance like uh, these other two Yahoos do, but uh, yeah, I'm glad to be here. What's up, everybody? The Magus, you are awesome. I used to be a Yamato main. You used to be. Time to learn Dynamo now that she got nerfed into the ground. Oh, I didn't do my, my character entrance. Uh, I've just been playing um, Bebop, uh, but I wanted to play on post nerf buffs, now reverted back to some <laughs> buffs more of a buff than a nerf but still i don't know i've been playing him toxic <laughs> as shit it's great so let's i mean kind of jump right into the patch notes and kind of where things started you know, starting with the ranked announcement uh yeah. maybe i'll kind of have you start with this and then we'll go into viking and myself but generally for you guys they added ranked in it will be on a weekly basis that there'll be time slots each day that you can do it and there'll be the, the information won't update on a will only update on a weekly basis but mangoose what are your kind of thoughts it's an interesting way to do ranked um you have to have 50 games before you go in which i think is awesome because you you don't want brand new people trying to come into rank and mess up people's experience but doing it on a weekly basis and then compiling all that data and then looking at who you went up against how well they did versus how well you did I like it in one aspect and the other aspect, um, you know, we're, we're in a, in a very immediate rewards sort of society right now <laughs> and not seeing how you're ranking after each game, I think is going to fuck with people's heads a little bit, but I like it. I think it's fine. And it's not set in stone either. It's they, they can always change it if they want to. For sure. And, and they're going to have ele 11 different ranks too. Like, yeah. <laughs> And I wonder, if that? It, is it like 11 different ranks in that it's really four different ranks with different like if it, er, variations mm. of each one? Or is it mm. actually 11 different ranks? And I think I almost I would prefer 11 different ranks because then it could mm. feel like your progression is more valid rather than just going like bronze one to bronze two and bronze two to bronze three. And you're like, yay, I'm still in bronze, but like at least I'm going up mm -hmm. slightly. Uh, it'll be interesting for sure. But I think you hit on the interesting note of those weekly changes are the weekly updates to your rank. And I don't know if I like it or not from my side of things, because on one hand, it doesn't feel as bad, at least for thinking about it, that I'm like, I don't immediately go down a rank if I lose a game. I go down a rank at the end of the week. And so like, I can still make up for that lost ground. But at the same time, not knowing for a whole week, if I lost 10 games, I'd be like, I hate it. I don't want to log in on Tuesday to see my <laughs> rank update because I'm going to be pissed that I'm at like bronze four or whatever it is. Right. But Viking, where are you at with the whole rank system? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely uh, it's something I, I think Mangu's kind of hit it like as far as we're, you know, in, in I guess how us gamers have kind of gotten accustomed to how we're, you, you know, feeling on ranked, seeing that, you know, the growth or the, the loss immediately after um i'm wondering if it'll help with any maybe toxic issues that might come through as well um the only other thing i can think of is that there's going to be probably people if they haven't already started make making third party sites trying to figure out what the mmr is going to be and then they're going to have updates daily and and all that stuff anyway um just by because you can see match histories and all that other stuff so um it might just be something that they're not doing but eventually the community does we'll see um to me i don't really care at this point the game is like super early access um i'm i'm stoked that they're trying to see what it's going to look like splitting the queues you know there's going to be a lot of people who just want to play casually a lot of people who are going to play ranked um the fact that it's um solos only is a big win in my opinion you know we're not going to have any big five stacks coming in and stomping on pug groups and all that stuff so um I, i'm i'm excited for it i think it'll be really cool and um i have a lot of faith in these devs so far they do these humongous patches out of nowhere like unexpectedly like did anybody have ranked on the bingo card for this week <laughs> i don't think so um so it, it's pretty cool from that perspective i'm really excited to see what they come up with and what they do and um you know i'll be along for the ride either way yeah i'm really curious about the toxicity response of all of this right. and, and what that's going to turn into um, I think final question on this topic, though, is 
draft mode? Do we think it's going to have a draft mode going into ranked or not? I, and I'm 50 50. On one hand, I hope it does, but I wouldn't, I don't expect it to either. But I'd love your guys' thoughts. I want it to. Like, that's that obviously, I think we everybody and their mother is going to say they want it to be, you know. Um, I, and the other thing too is going to be lane preference. Like, if you are a solo player and you keep getting put into duo and it messes with your rank because that's not just how you're familiar with playing the game that's going to be a feels bad. So I hope that that's something they're considering. Um, and then if that's the other, if it doesn't go that way, then again, the toxic aspects of the, you know, now people are playing for, you know, rank they're playing for it. And if you're solo laner, you know, it locked in bebop and they're not used to playing solo bebop, then, you know, and it costs you their game or, you know, makes the game a lot harder. You're going to be really upset and flaming that person. And that already happens enough in the game as it is, let alone when ranks on the line. So I, I hope that they've accounted for that. But um, well, I guess we'll find out. Mangus, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's it. De we definitely need some kind of I, th I think we definitely need some sort of draft mode if we are going to have ranked because there's a lot of lanes like I uh, like we were discussing. Um, I don't think there's any real like there's no you you've got early game heroes you've got late game heroes but it really comes down to a rock paper scissors of who counters who in what lane so say you have a haze versus abrams that haze is going to have a bad time every mm -hmm. every fucking time if they're if they're equally skilled that mm -hmm. abrams is going to shit on that haze that same abrams though you put him in a lane against dynamo that same abrams is going to get shit on by the dynamo you've got to have some way of being able to pick ban and counter pick like look, you you never want to pick certain heroes into other heroes it's just it's not it's not, not cool man <laughs> yeah i mean especially if you get into like some of those super long range like great talent vindicta versus two sh super short range like abrams yamato mm -hmm. or something like that right where you're like oh good i just don't get to do anything for the first 10 minutes of the game and just mm -hmm. hope those two don't dominate the rest of the time and when you get stuck into those random lanes it feels awful and so I'm hoping draft mode, either if it's not in the first initial version of ranked, that it's in the next patch version of ranked, that they're going to be like, you know what? Yeah, this is especially for ranked, an important thing. Casual play, it's still pick your top three heroes, get shoved into wherever you get shoved in for ease of matchmaking. But I, I really want ranked to have a draft mode. And I think we're going to start seeing the meta really define itself once a draft mode exists. Right, once mm -hmm. you're able to actually coordinate, group up, create compositions, the whole nine yards. So I'm excited for that. Any final thoughts on ranks before we move on? Uh, I think this first week is going to be insane. Everybody <laughs> is going to be trying it. Um, there's not going to be, I'm, I'm assuming there's going to be just a fresh MMR for it. So I assume. At, at, at bare minimum 50 players guys with you know 100 plus hours are going to be playing with those guys it's going to be chaos it's going to be <laughs> nutty uh i i i, I want to say i'm going to avoid it but i'll probably be in there messing people's mmr up so we'll be we'll see how it goes <laughs> uh, did we mention that you can't have any sort of social ticks on your history but before you go into rank like oh. you can't have any like chat bans or anything like right. that i did not know that but that's a, a a great thing to add to that yeah yeah, so it's 50 games, no chat bans, no no um, report uh, abuses as well as no one. I didn't even know they were tracking that. Yeah. yeah. So basically anything negative on your account, you will not get to participate in ranked at all. So it's not even like something that you can appeal to or wait enough time. You just don't get to play, which I'm fine with. Yeah. I, I'm kind of looking forward to not having the confirmation game, you know, when, when you're sitting at like gold two and you're about to go to good gold three and you have that game that you have to win in order yep. to progress mm -hmm. that's not going to be that way at least not at first like we said nothing set in stone yeah mm -hmm. we'll have to see well let's move on to the second thing which is our lane changes um i mean the lane changes were massive this patch a lot of them were like yeah. exactly what viking asked for to the point yeah. that it was almost like yoshi are you watching this because like <laughs> some of them were weirdly pointed <laughs> um but generally these changes, right? The guardians moved back. The troopers do less damage to guardians early. The guardians do more damage throughout the course of a game. The troopers soul changes instead of changing at 10 minutes, it changes at eight minutes now. Like, I mean, massive stuff. And first off, rest in pieces, the tip of the week from last week, which was sliding down the <laughs> stairs, which like, again, felt real, weirdly pointed. Um, but what are you guys' thoughts on the lane changes specifically so far? Mangus, we'll start with you. 
I like the intent behind it. I hate the result. Oh, okay. Um, at, at, we've been bitching all week. Um, I, everybody that I know that plays has been bitching all week. That it seems like now, it doesn't matter how well you do in your lane. As soon as one of your lanes goes down, it's over. It's mm. it's you're on the back foot for the rest of the game. You can come back, of course, but it's far more difficult now. And here's why I think that is. I think now, with the way that the, with the way that the lanes are designed, where it's much harder to take that guardian, when a lane does dominate and take that guardian, it's a heck of a lot harder for that person to then, if if that if they rotate out of that lane, to come back and then just immediately take that take the the, the opposing guardian back. Um, it's also a lot easier if you have a duo lane that pushes up, takes that tower. One person could go rotate freely, and it's very easy because you're already ahead. Mm -hmm. for the uh, for a solo person to defend against the two people trying to take that guardian so that's why i think um at least in my games i'm seeing a lot of games where you're going into 20 30 minute mark and there are still tier one guardians up on on mm -hmm. one side of the map or other and you just did not see that before um i don't think it's as much because of the the minions doing less tower damage it's because you have to be so far forward to deal damage to that guardian also, uh, something that we were talking about today, because you have to be so far forward and because the minions go so far forward into the Guardian, it makes it a lot easier to dive the uh, shop now. Because yep. the minions are almost always going to be closer to, that, to, the, to the Guardian now than you are if you're at the shop. So mm -hmm. you got to really look out for those cheeky, uh, cheeky shop dives. So, I, like I said, I like the intent behind it, but I think it had the opposite, sort of the opposite effect of what they wanted. Admittedly, when you started on that, I was firmly against you that I was like, no, they're like, I completely disagree. <laughs> it's a good change. Right. And then halfway through your like statement, I was like, he's right about all of this, huh? Like maybe I am not <laughs> as against this as I thought I was. Right. Like it's, it's one of those things I, I, and the thing that really turned me to your side on this is that you'll hit 30, 45 minute games where a tier one is still standing because we had that game last night and I thinking about it, it's not the only game that I've had like this where mm -hmm. my purple T1 was still up 45 minutes at the end of the end of the game. And every time they tried to take it, they couldn't like the, and I was me solo for the most part, trying to hold that a lot of the time. That's a huge thing, especially compared to previous where you rarely hit 15 minutes without all four of them down because that's just how easy it was. So I, I, I've come around now I'm with you that I think it's a worse change than better. But I think there's a middle ground to be found that would keep it beneficial on all sides because they clearly want to extend the laning phase to an extent in that they mm -hmm. don't want it to be over in five minutes for certain lanes, but 20 in other lanes. They're trying to like bring it to a middle ground. So I wonder what that's going to be. But Viking kind of want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, uh, I, I was one of the bigger uh voices maybe recently uh in our at least in our group for wanting these changes um i i will agree with mangus though it has made some aspects of the game harder overall like you know the games are just going a lot longer uh i i don't think i have a less than 40 minute game whereas before we would get you know 25 35 min minute games now they're all like 40 minutes plus so that might be a few factors that I'm going to throw in as devil's advocate. One, the changes, people just aren't used to them. So um, in other MOBAs, I'll use the one that I played the most, which is League of Legends, for example. When they did a lot of their tower um, buffs, one of the things that teams had to get used to was focusing down towers as an actual objective. Um, so a lot of the games that I'm in, players tend to have a lot more of a solo mentality. They're running around getting farms. They're, you know, so they're just doing their own thing, just trying to make themselves as powerful as possible and focusing their own lanes, what the, what they were assigned to. Occasionally you'll get some people who like, you know, have the roamer mentality and they'll roam around and try and influence lanes. But it seems like when you're queuing up as a solo, you're playing solo. You're not, even if you're in a duo lane, you're still kind of just doing your own thing. Um, so I think this m maybe will have to push people to, you know, focus the, the the towers down as an objective, just like in a lot of other MOBAs. And uh, maybe that'll fix it. Uh, it's only been a few days. We'll see how people start to adjust to it, but games have definitely gone longer. Um, and I will also say, if they are listening, I hope so. That'd be really cool. Uh, I would like to see rampaging tower damage rather than just the straight. And, and I'm still going to complain about the fact that uh, the tower doesn't aggro 
when someone is in range of it and they are hitting an enemy player. I think it should switch aggro, especially considering most of these champions are ranged. They don't really get close enough most of the time to get into where they would automatically get targeted by the tower. So from that perspective, I still want I mean, to see that. Real, real quick, ramping, yeah. not rampaging. Ramping. Ramping, yeah, you said rampaging. Yeah. Ramping Did I say tower rampaging? damage. Yes. ADHD. So yeah, I, I agree with you. I think ramping tower damage could be beneficial and it depends. I don't know if I want to see them add resistances to it or, or resistance negation to it and that it'll just burn you straight down. If it does 50 del if it does 50 damage, it deals 50 damage. There's no like Pretty mitigation damage. in that. Um, it could be beneficial. It's, it's hard. Like the towers don't mean as much in this for better right. and worse in some cases. And so it's, it'll be interesting to see what they do with it. Any final thoughts on the lane changes though? Mm, I think they could fix a lot by just extending the range in which that you can attack the tier one guardian. Maybe not on the stairs like you used to be able to by backsliding, but mm -hmm. just on the edge of the stairs, I yeah. think it would, would be would be fair enough. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. I think there's you have to go in like five, six feet almost, right? Past that yeah. staircase to deal damage to it. And it puts you really out of position to do that as well, right? Like if there's, I was in a lane yesterday against the seven, all seven had to do was wait for me to get into that range to try and deal damage to the T1, put a stun on me. And he goes, great, what are you going to do? Cause you can't get back fast enough now to survive. I could get basically to the staircase of my T1 and he would then kill me, even though I'm using everything I have to try and get over there and get away from him. It didn't quite matter because that distance is just so long now. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. Again, maybe it's just because I haven't played as many games and you guys have played a lot and you kind of gotten used to it. But to me, it adds that risk versus reward. Like if you want to go up to a tower and put damage on it and push with your minions, but they're still healthy enough to defend, you know, that's that's your bad play, right? Like they, you should be looking to poke them out, try and get them to force them off the tower so you can get free tower damage. And I feel like maybe, again, it's it's a new change, but you know, as a newer guy who doesn't play as many hours, I'm not as familiar or as comfortable with the old system. This feels more natural to me versus with other MOBAs that I've played. You know, like you're not normally going to just go up and free hit on a tower when an enemy champion is right, like right in your face. Like it just doesn't happen in other MOBAs. Whereas it felt like before, if I was there, they didn't care. They just came up and hit the tower anyway. They like they didn't give a crap about you. They, in fact, they're gonna dive on top of you because they're stronger than you anyway, or whatever. And so it's like now you have to really think about it. Like, do we really want to coordinate and dive on this and make it a you know that risk versus reward? And so I'm all for it still. Um, but again, maybe that's just me being relatively newer still and not as many hours as you guys, so it doesn't feel as I think it Different definitely is me. riskier, and I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. I think right. the level of risk was put too far over the edge it okay. is the biggest thing. I mean, games are going way longer, which is not, in my opinion, a good thing. I don't want I I can't, like, and I have lots of free time, but I get, like, exhausted sometimes. Like, playing some of these games that go 45 minutes upwards of almost an hour. Like, you know, I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll play two or three games with the guys. Now I'm like, oh, dude, that one game was enough. If I have to do that again, <laughs> like that's going to be really rough. Like it, it's just so it, it, that's, I think that's counterproductive. So yes, they do need to find something else. While again, I'm more for the changes than I am against them. Uh, it, the game times need to be considered and they need to find another thing around it. And I think they will. Yeah. Not worried about it in the slightest. But let's move on to the next big thing that changed, which was camp timers and the breakables being changed as well. Mm -hmm. uh, real quick, the camp timers changed with the tier one camps or the light camps were changed to spawn at two minutes into the game rather than three minutes. The tier twos are at five minutes rather than seven minutes. And the tier threes are at eight minutes rather than seven minutes. So they've basically spread them all out, which I think is great for the tier twos and tier threes but they moved the tier ones and twos earlier in the game, which provide a bunch of different options for you. If you're behind in a lane now, you're not kind of forced to sit there until seven minutes before you can go get a jungle camp. Now at five minutes, you can get a jungle camp, come back and defend, get a jungle camp, come back and defend and do a lot more with that. But Mangus, what are your thoughts so far on that change? Oh, I love it. I, I think this is a great change just mm. overall. Um, it was always um, very frustrating to me knowing like at five minutes that I could definitely take a tier two camp, no problem. Yeah. But I just can't because it's not up yet. Um, it was the, the 
kind of pissed me off a little bit. I think it contributes to the problem I was talking about with one lane snowballing over another lane, mm -hmm. but that's a skill issue, a skill and knowledge issue, not mm -hmm. a game mechanic issue. When you have one lane where one of the laners, you, you know, you push out to midway, one of the laners sneaks out, takes a tier uh, at five minutes, takes a tier two camp, comes back. It, it, they just, and they keep doing that, they get stronger and stronger and you eventually overwhelm that lane. So I, I really, I really like this change. I think it's, I think it's great. It was always weird to me that tier two and tier three camps spawned at the same time anyway. Yeah, mm. it, it did seem a little like condensed and you saw the whole mini map light up with all the tier twos and threes that popped mm. up at the same time. Viking, what about you? Uh, I don't have a whole lot to add to this because again, I, I haven't got like a uh, muscle memory of knowing to, I mean, Mangus would literally call out be like, okay, it's seven minutes, go do camps. And I'm like, oh shoot. Okay. So I, I had no idea <laughs> anyway. So this is all just fine for me. And uh, it, you know, you and I landing today, like you're just like, oh, I'm going to go do the camp. And I was like, I didn't even know it was there. So you have fun with that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, for me, I agree with Mangus in a sense that it's uh, one of those things that as a new player, we got to get, you know, on the ball and start skilling up on how the map works it's it's a, to me that's one of the things like you know the floor versus ceiling for new players is the map is a big part of it there's mm -hmm. so much going on on the map so many little things i constantly find myself behind on souls and it's because i'm not paying attention enough to camp timers and everybody else is so they're just farming like that and i'm just standing around like okay i guess i'll just go to blue lane uh <laughs> and sit here for like three minutes while i wait for a wave to come up to me and you know then a laner comes up takes all my farm before i can do anything to it and so i just sit there and you know throw bombs and punch them it's fine <laughs> I, I mean i think it's going to ease the barrier of entry to an extent on the jungle understanding because it's right. not three-fourths of the map lighting up at the same moment comparatively sure. now it's actually staggered and it creates this degree of separation as well in that great the the easy ones spawn first and the middle yeah. ones spawn second and the hard <laughs> ones spawn third right like that kind of stuff uh, yeah. the other change that happened alongside this was the breakables so originally they spawned with the tier ones so they now spawn still with the tier ones but a minute earlier at two minutes and mm -hmm. they now which i didn't realize this was a thing before and now it's been extended was they upgrade it the golden or the golden idols is what they're called upgrade at 10 minutes rather than 15 minutes which i didn't realize they upgraded mm -hmm. at all and then now they oh, really? also have a second upgrade at 25 minutes that give them even more permanent buffs for you and your teammates as you're getting those, which I think is great to know now that I know it's a thing. But <laughs> uh, I think having another one extended also is super beneficial. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I think I kept calling them urns in the last, the last time we did the podcast. But yeah, the golden statue buffs are amazing and people sleep on them so hard yes <laughs> and they're just they're getting more and more powerful now so it's freaking awesome yeah and, it. and especially since they've been added to the sinner sacrifice machines right knowing that they scale even with those now is also a huge mm. addition and makes those super valuable i've yeah. also seen those being taken so consistently it's ridiculous that before Annoying. they were say again it's annoying because that was like one of the only ways that I was able to kind of sometimes stay in was I would go up there and punch those things. And I was doing the, you know, my, my Zelda impression running around the map, just breaking boxes and, and golden statues to try and give myself some stats, you know, because I can't get the stats through uh, souls and buying items apparently. But uh, yeah, no. So it's really annoying when I'm playing with people who are on top of all of that because they go and they take them before I can get to them and um, they're just more on top of it. But that, that, again, I agree with uh, that. That's something that is also kind of cool about this game. You can see where like as a newer player or an inexperienced player where you need to get better at it. It's like it's a constant like little mini game within a game within a game. Like so uh, those are one of the things, though, that I struggle with. It's like, man, the, they're beating me in all the mini games that I was decent <laughs> at now. Uh, so, yeah, you just got to be faster and better. One of the other places that like felt pointed that we talked about last week was those ropes up to the middle level to get the Sinner Sacrifice mm. machines on some of them, right? Mm -hmm. And they fixed that. So now the rope goes into the Sinner Sacrifice area and then there's a staircase from that area up to the roof, which I think is a fantastic way to change it, right? It used to be the staircases were for both and now they've kind of mixed and matched. And I think that's a great way to do it. And it doesn't, it's not nearly as frustrating anymore to try and get into that one in fucking, it's yellow, I think, um, that, is impossible or not yellow sorry in blue that's impossible mm -hmm. to get into when it was just the ropes all the way up because you just mm -hmm. consistently zip past it so i think that's a fantastic yeah. change 
I would always end up just going all the way to the roof and then dropping in. That's what, That's what I, I did too. Do. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it was the one time I got to show skill expression. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. This is going to get into the next change, and I'm going to let Mangus kind of kick it off, but I'll introduce it. And it's the Yamato nerfs that, like, I think oh, out of oh, all of the no. changes to heroes this patch, I mean, Haze, I, I, I'll like Haze, but I'm not going to talk about it because I don't want them to nerf her again. But Yamato was the biggest one that surprised me and seemed like the biggest hit to any single hero throughout. So, Mangus, what kind of what are your thoughts? Yeah, it was out of nowhere and a huge nerf. Like, normally when they do a nerf, it's like a couple percent change or it's like 0 0.03 spirit scaling or some shit like that. They just were removed all bullet and spirit resist from Yamato on her ultimate, that's a huge, huge nerf just, and it is absolutely, I think uh, it's it's okay-ish for gun Yamato, but especially for spirit Yamato, um, they also nerfed every single one of the tier four items that I use on Yamato. So not <laughs> only did they, they nerfed the cooldown of her one, they nerfed her, her ultimate so that it's basically just a long cast, um, debuff remover now instead of what it used to be like dangerous and scary like i mean look look at the way people react now it used to be you ult on yamato people would fucking run it didn't matter how well you were doing in the game you ult on yamato fucking like cockroaches when you turn the lights on everybody would scatter <laughs> now you ult on yamato and they're like oh we know exactly where she's going to be so we can load all this damage on her so that as soon as she comes out of her ult she's dead yep. you see because... herself let's go it, it's it, it's insane um and yeah there's just mystic reverb got nerfed escalating exposure got nerfed and um refresher got nerfed and torment pulse got nerfed that's another big part of my build for her um they they kind of reverted those nerfs on torment pulse but they mm -hmm. also nerfed the spirit scaling on it a little bit but god dang man they they eviscerated spirit yamato and i'm not sure why i think what i would love to them would love to see as a result of this is that two things one she can't go below a certain health threshold while she's in her ultimate she takes full damage but she can't go below 150 and maybe one of the upgrades is that that adds another 100 health so it's 250 mm. by late game great so she has a 250 health minimum rather than one hp and the other thing is that she heals a portion of the damage she dealt while in her ultimate that way at the end of it she gets this burst of healing so it's not just oh look she has a dot on her while she's in her ultimate congrats she's dead right like that's just it right and i think with those two things you bring it so that she can still take a lot of damage in her ultimate and if she's not effective while she's in her ultimate she gets punished for it afterwards but if she is effective she has some kind of like benefits that she gains after the fact too i like that idea um getting a burst of health based on how much damage you dealt during your ultimate i think that would be great it'd be, it'd be something at least to help her out right like th that's really what she needs uh i mean dual lanes is another place that we can talk about with a patch dynamo and ivy we talked about again last week i get felt very pointed uh dynamo and ivy now have a dual lane preference when they're being picked it's not something you can choose it's something that the heroes just have natively on them and mm -hmm. i think that's an interesting way to do it uh, based on uh, they don't have a draft mode yet they don't have lane selection yet and i wonder if this is kind of that like middle ground step before that gets implemented but i'd love to hear your thoughts on that viking uh, i mean i'm i'm huge for it because that uh i think that gives again if you're picking those two champions at least then you know um like there's a high chance that you're going into dual lane and that just gives you more agency as uh, as a player and, and before you go into draft so if you put those on your your choices just be expecting to go into dual lane and know how to play the role as a duo um i mean i, I again i i think it's just the band-aid for the overall problem which i think they're going to maybe start addressing and this is the step in that direction um because i think i would dislike it if that's just how they do it overall that they continue to just put what they deem as the heroes that should be in each lane versus allowing us as players to innovate and try and figure that out for ourselves um and uh, so i i would rather they just put the power in our hands and let us pick what we prefer whether that's duo or whatever um and if if they still want to like 
have that as like a soft thing. Okay, so if you prefer to do duo and you're an Ivy main, then you have a really good chance of getting duo rather than, you know, oh, I'll, you know, screw your prio, you're going to <laughs> solo lane anyway. Uh, that, that, that's fine with me too. Like it, that, I can lean more into that, but I think they, they would benefit from allowing people to pick the their preferred, uh, you know, solo versus duo. And, and eventually even getting to the point where you're picking, you know, the color of your lane, but I, I, the, at least solo duo. And Mangus, I know you've been playing a ton of Dynamo recently. Have you mm -hmm. been always put into the duo lane or have you been gotten any single lane Dynamo at all? Hell no. It's it's still a crapshoot. Okay. So it's still like when I when I when I queue by myself, it seems to be about 50-50 whether I get duo or solo when I'm with Dynamo. All right. That's not bad. I, 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 I'm I'm fine with that because I don't like this fucking change because I like to play solo Dynamo and I like to play solo Ivy. I don't want mm -hmm. to play with a duo on either of those characters. I think the interesting thing, especially with the Ivy, is that that tournament Ivy build with her kudzu bomb has mm -hmm. took taken such prominence that like support Ivy has kind of gone out the window to an extent, and it's just full tilt damage Ivy all the time. And then they're like, <laughs> oh, by the way, now she's in a duo lane all the time, or or mm -hmm. higher preference of all of the lanes is duo, which just it seemed late, right? Like this change seemed to me like it could have happened weeks ago and would have been fine. Now that players are starting to get used to solo playing the more like utility support quote unquote mm. heroes in lanes solo lanes they do it just felt odd yeah now i mean the... if Go when, when you're when you talk about like support heroes i don't think anybody's a sport until you're about six seven k souls uh, I agree. until then you know everybody's just what they are they're like like i discussed earlier there are some sort of rock paper scissors counter picks that go along with that but nobody's truly a support until they have enough souls to actually build into a support. Um, I think everybody starting out in lane has basically the same items to allow them to farm a little effectively. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's whatever. I don't like. I don't like the. Uh, I don't like that thing. However, like, but like I said, it hasn't really affected me. I've been solo Dynamo. I don't know how many times now. <laughs> mm. Perfect. Well, I mean, another change that happened in the patch is the urn changes, which I vehemently am against mainly the the one specific <laughs> one which is that and they tried this before you're now revealed no matter what while you're carrying the urn which i think has actually de-incentivized the urn being taken in a lot more of the games that i've played it seems to sit and do nothing for a huge portion of matches and then maybe like two will go off back to back and then it just sits and does nothing for another 20 minutes of the game and i think it's because that reveal means that the whole enemy team can watch where you are, collapse on you midway, collapse on you at the end, right? And there's no sense of like me doing something while the enemy team is busy because it's really easy to just disengage whatever I'm doing and head straight to where the urn is. Especially now it gives 15% more souls. It gives a permanent buff like the golden idols to your entire team, right? Like mm -hmm. the value went sky high in the urn and then they made it so it's significantly harder to take and deliver to the end section. Viking, what do you kind of feel about the urn changes? Uh, and again, this might just be because of, of my um, lack of game time compared to you guys. Uh, I'm up to like 45 hours, I think, now. Um, to me, I just thought of it as a, a neutral objective that they want people grouping and fighting over versus just giving away. Um, that's how I took the changes. Um, and I could be off base. I don't obviously know what was their intention behind it, but that's how I viewed it when I was reading it. I was like, oh, this is like you know, in League of Legends fighting over Dragon or, you know, in, in any other game where you're supposed to kind of get together and have a team fight or, you know what, we're too weak as a team to fight over this, they get, they can take it. Um, so that's kind of how I was viewing it. Um, the only thing I could think of as a happy medium would be maybe to have it um, where it's not, you're constantly visible, but it's on like a, you know, like on a ticker. So you're visible for like, a second then you go invisible again visible for a second go invisible again something like that so that way you can kind of you know move around a little bit not make it as obvious um but again i i kind of think of it more of like you know this is a team fight go button it, that somebody activated so either we know what they're trying to do we can see where that person is we have to be prepared that it's going to be a fight for it or maybe that person's going to try and do some sneaky stuff and just take it in on a solo mission and they use that opportunity to push another lane while that one person is obviously going over there i don't know i think there's 
opportunities for more play style um and maybe we'll see how it shakes out as people get more used to it because it's a it's a big change mm -hmm. from what i can understand it's not that big to me because i haven't played enough for it to be like oh my gosh this is so crazy but uh that's how i when i read it i was like oh they just want something that we all fight over again they they want one more thing on the map that's not just pushing lanes that that we all go to that's not mid boss you know what I mean? And and we do, which uh, I think is kind of cool. I don't know if it'll work the way they want it to, if that's their intention, but I think it's cool. And another thing they added to this as well is that if you heavy melee the person that's carrying the urn, it drop it forces them to drop the urn. So there is no mm -hmm. just like drive by. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to run past the enemy to make sure that I can deliver the urn because if they just heavy punch and I've done it a couple times where they don't expect mm -hmm. it. They're just gunning at you heavy melee. They keep going. They don't realize they've dropped the urn. And you're like, thank you. I'll pick this up and take it to my team or for my team, right? Like that's, I think, a good change as well. But Mangus, what do you feel about the urn changes? I really like the changes personally. I like that they make uh, the, the carrier visible. Um, I think if, if they were, it, it, what was happening was people would take the urn and just go back to their base with it. Mm. And then you have a situation where both teams are sitting around with their thumbs up their asses waiting for this person to come in with the urn and it just never happens. Um, with with invisible, you can that you can't do that anymore. That you know if they're if they're doing that strategy, and I think that's a dipshit strategy. I don't think it's good. It's healthy for the game. Um, I think if they were to make them invisible again, then there should be a point in the map where you can't run with the urn. Like you can't go past the crawlers with the urn or something like that. Mm. Uh, and what you do, it just auto drops. You're confined to like an area while you're carrying it. I think that's a, a right. good change too. I also I, as far I like the punching the, like, goes. Say again. As far as the punching goes, oh. punching the urn carrier, immediately the very first game that I was in, um, there was a Shiv had the urn was running it. Our Mirage hid inside the juke chamber, and when Shiv ran past it, he punched him. <laughs> it was one of the funniest fucking things I've ever seen in the game because you can almost see the surprise on the animated Shiv's face, like you can see the player's surprise, like holy shit, what what, what the hell just happened? It's such a good change. Like it gives some kind of counterplay to the urn. That doesn't because it feels like yes you can sit there and you can try and like burst the guy down before he delivers the urn but nine times out of ten if someone was just running standing on the delivery point they're gonna get mm -hmm. it yeah you may pick up right. those straggle souls but the majority of them come from the drop there or the dunk i'm gonna start right. calling it urn dunk um the dunk <laughs> of urn and so right. it, it was beneficial there now being able to be like wait around the corner and just hold a melee for him super cool a big fan of that I also, I would be okay with like the UAV idea of like, that it sends out like pulses eventually giving <laughs> vision, right? And I, and admittedly, part of the reason I hate it is because I was the haze that built all my sprint speed, grabbed, hit invis, and then grabbed the urn and just invised across the entire map to deliver that thing, right? That's what's most frustrating is I can't do my invis <laughs> runs anymore. But I, I think it'll be interesting to see what happens. Like I said, they did this change before where they made it visible for everybody then invisible, then they, or, then, or it was invisible, they made it visible, then they reverted that the next patch right afterwards. So we'll see if this one sticks this time around. Uh, mid boss, you mentioned objectives earlier. Mid boss got some better scaling in this patch as well, which I think is beneficial in that mid boss, when you get it, it affects your minions, it gives them more health, more damage, and they mm -hmm. go down the lanes and do things with it. Now it's going to increase the health and damage they get for the number of mid bosses taken up to three mid bosses. I think it's a good change. It makes the late game feel more impactful when you're getting that late game objective. It's definitely going to do something for you. And I've seen mid boss takes just the minions alone have a huge impact on the map, even without the heroes being able to push down from there too. But Mangus, where mm -hmm. are you at with the mid boss changes? Uh, I think it's great. Um, I think the, one of the problems that I have with deadlock is it has sort of the over prime problem, which is that minions just don't matter that much. Hmm. Um, of course, if you leave them alone, they'll take objectives, but you have to leave them alone for a long time. And out of the, what, what I have, like six, 700 hours of deadlock now, I've only seen one game where the minions won. <laughs> That's very rare in a MOBA. Usually yeah. you have a few games where the, the base dies the minions. I've only seen that happen once in deadlock, and uh, that speaks volumes to how effective the minions are at pushing the patrons. Um, and this will make them a little bit beefier and a little, little bit more damage. Overall, great change. Um, also, mid boss having health regen now is great because used to be, you know, 
you get mid boss down to like a quarter and then you, they fight you off of it then they come back to a quarter health mid boss and it's yep. just really easy to take now it'll actually you know regen some health up so it won't be that easy to do you really have six or seven hundred hours I think so <laughs> oh my gosh and i'll actually i'll throw in an extra tip of the week locked in tip of the week for the minions if your minions what? if their minions are halfway across the map already so they're on your side of the map if the two waves are meeting each other all you have to do is kill one minion and it'll take a walker and the tier three guardians by itself when it pushes assuming it's not intervened with which that that's mm. the real caveat on it right but if they're letting one of the outer lanes just sit and you take one minion your minions will push and take the two objectives by themselves which can be beneficial but again it's really easy to just run over there clear the minions out and move on with your life but mm -hmm. so mangus how many hours do you actually have 544 Jeez. but viking That's what are you crazy. what are your thoughts on the mid boss changes and the minions and the whole nine I, uh, I have not experienced enough of it to to notice a, a meaningful difference uh i'm I, but it just from an uh a MOBA standpoint. I, I love it when objectives are important, are powerful, are things that um, are worth fighting over or are going to be a comeback mechanic. Like, you know, if you get in there and you're behind and you manage to get like a crazy seven alt with a, you know, crazy dynamo alt and you get the mid boss now and it gives you the opportunity to either get back in the game or maybe even outright win it, depending on how late it is. Uh, I think that's awesome, and I think it's always healthy for a MOBA to have um, really impactful, important, neutral objectives that force team fights uh, or force meaningful decisions. You know, a lot of what we all enjoy about MOBAs typically is that it's not just a, like, you know, run in and play the game. You have to think about stuff a little bit. You have to kind of, you know, uh, use your brain a little bit, and if you have a brain off and you're playing the game you might not be as successful as you and your teammates want you to be so uh from that perspective i think it's it's always good to have meaningful powerful uh, neutral buffs that people want to go for yeah i think the last big change i want to talk about from the patch is a, a relatively like minor one in terms of it's not something you're going to notice super easily but if you mm. have played other games in the past that'll be big is input buffering being mm. able to kind of cue your abilities that I'm pressing one, I'm pressing two, I'm pressing three, and they go out in that order afterwards is super beneficial. And it's not something I've felt a ton of, but in the moments where I have felt that I'm like pressing the ability and it's not going off, but now it is, it have mm. been hugely, hugely beneficial for me. Mangus, I mean, 550 hours. What what are your kind of thoughts on input buffering? Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, the one the the hero that it benefits the most is yamato and she's got to been pretty <laughs> hardcore nerfed but um yeah it, it's it's absolutely amazing um the the big example of how it's improved my quality of life in my games this week is with dynamo whenever you phantom strike well i use phantom strike on dynamo a lot of times uh phantom strike and then immediately ulting on top of that phantom strike without get so they have zero time to react to your ultimate whereas before you would phantom strike you would hit pop off and it would be like just a split second but that split second's all it takes a lot of times for people to hit unstoppable or some shit yeah absolutely viking have you noticed any differences with input buffering versus not yeah just a little bit with uh with bebop in particular if i land my hook and and i input buffer the the bomb and then into the uppercut it actually it feels really really fast and smooth and it does feel like i mean people are probably going to hate it because of the pull mechanic but that they have less reaction time um and i think that benefits in general just it feels good it just feels right um and you couple that with like in your the uh, changes to instant casting and all that stuff uh it just i think it makes sense um it's what most people are probably familiar with in a lot of other games it should be in this game because of all the the skill uh expression that comes with a lot of these characters so um I, yeah it's been great awesome well let's move on into our tip of the week second one i guess now <laughs> i need like a jingle or something right for back. tip of the week this week's locked in tip is that you should always have somebody ready to parry the mid boss buff when your team is taking down mid boss at the very end the crystal falls down in the center you or one of your teammates should make sure you stand where the crystal lands and press the parry button as it lands this way if any enemies show up they can't immediately take the crystal out from under you and you help your team secure it 
On the flip side, if your enemy is taking mid boss, you may be able to sneak in there, drop down right on the crystal, hit parry, and then steal it away for yourself. Thanks for watching Locked In this week, and now back to the show. Perfect. So yeah, I mean, tip of the week, parry the mid boss crystal. I mean, it sounds really straightforward. It is really straightforward, but it makes a huge, huge difference if you're not doing it and you start doing it. Mangus, one of the clips in there that we showed was actually you on Ivy parrying a Mo Krill to get the crystal. And so kind of talk to me about your thoughts of why parrying is beneficial other than the obvious reasons. I mean, people just run in and punch that shit before you can. It, <laughs> it, it eliminates the 50-50 of two people punching it at one time. Mm -hmm. one opposing team um if one team is has somebody set up to parry um they're they're going to they're going to secure it however i think you have to take it deeper now you have to have one person that's going to punch on 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 time one person that's going to parry and one person to late punch in case somebody somebody from the opposing team comes in and parries it, it's a whole big thing um i will say nice tip is um a lot of people don't know this ivy whenever she's in stone form she auto parries anybody that tries to punch her that's why she one of her voice lines is she laughs and says oh you tried to punch a gargoyle you know like what's <laughs> wrong with you um so one of the things you can do is time stone form to drop as soon as they would be punching that thing that way not only do you get the parry out with with uh with ivy but you also get a stun on anybody that comes in so i didn't yeah. do it in that clip but and I mean, one of good. the clips that was in there happened in a game just today, actually, was the enemy Yamato dropped right in, parried two people. I was parrying underneath her and she parried my team and then punched right afterwards and was able to steal the mid boss for her team. Wow. Felt so terrible being on the team that had five people in the pit and lost it. But it, it's <laughs> also another strategy to that that you can kind of add in. But Viking, what are your feelings on it? I mean, I bet that Yamato felt like a god, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I, I, again, I'm a, a, a league enjoyer. I watch a lot of pro league. Um, and one of the things that's w one of the coolest things to happen is a 50 50 smite um, where one of the enemies comes in um, and they win the smite war and it, j and it can change the tide. Sometimes it doesn't matter. It, it, the game was already, you know, won before that, but it's a feel good moment. Like, you know, I bet again, that Yamato probably felt like a freaking God. Not only did they come in there and outplay the outplay, like Mangus was just describing, um, but then got the, the, their, uh, the mid boss buff for their team anyway, which is so cool like i they i i hope everybody was glazing that guy i know that term there you go 40 <laughs> years old gotcha uh and uh, they should because it's cool it's it, it again i'm a huge fan of anything where players feel like they have an actual agency so the parry inception i'm all for it everybody should be parrying everybody and everybody should be meleeing everybody or just get a dynamo and have them alt and then you just secure it with no problems because <laughs> they can't do anything yeah, and I mean, the biggest thing there is coordinating with your team on it, right? Like if you see yeah. people lining up for the punch, be the one to step forward and parry. Yes, it's really <laughs> nice. And I trust me, I love it too. When your icon is the one that says secured the mid boss and that pops up and that's a great feeling. Being the one to parry somebody that tried to steal it away from your team is a better feeling, I promise you, <laughs> because losing it feels <laughs> awful. But I, I think, yeah, parry the mid boss. Hopefully it doesn't get changed next week or the next patch and we don't have to go back and now two tips of the week are invalid, but it's fine. Uh, um, and I do think that there's some stuff that they kind of maybe need to improve on in a sense that, that other MOBAs do do um, and do successfully to continue to, you know, create a more competitive environment and, and all that fun stuff. But overall, I'm just a fan of just I mean, that patch is huge. And I I don't read every patch that comes out because I've been kind of lurking, but there was so much. And in our group chat, we were just going over all the different changes and we're like, oh my gosh, can't believe they did this. Oh my gosh, can't believe they did that. It was, it's just a wall of changes. And uh, like it's a little overwhelming. Patch. Say that again. It's like that every patch. Is it, it's, it's just, it's, it's a little overwhelming, but at the same time, I'm a big fan of it. I just think it's really, really cool. Um, I'm super excited to see what ranked does for everybody. Um, you know, I can't wait to be whatever their lowest rank is, but, uh, you know, it should be fun. I, I'm excited. I, I, I'm just excited about the game. I'm excited that it exists. I want to see more of it and I can't wait till they start doing, you know, more sponsored tournaments and all that stuff, especially now that Ranked is coming along. You'll start to see some of these amazing players probably showing off a little bit more. Um, I kind of hope that they do something with the, um, the where we can watch, the, so the watch section to be able to watch some of the really high-ranked games so that we can see 
you know what they're doing maybe even on this show we do a you know a breakdown of some of the top games and stuff like that of the week i think that would be super fun i'm just excited for it i just think it's gonna be so badass <laughs> yeah i can't wait <laughs> mangus what about you what are your what are your final thoughts I think I'm going to start calling my final thoughts reasons I like Deadlock. <laughs> um, this is something that Jedi said earlier that reminded me. Um, you, you were talking about the, the mini game of of farming and, and stuff like that. Yep. Uh, it's something Day9, who you guys know is my favorite streamer, he brought up when he was talking about Deadlock is that Deadlock is a series of mini games that tie into a macro game. Mm -hmm. um, just, just movement having to jump after you dash like waiting for your your stamina bar to turn blue to get that dash jump that's a little mini game knowing when to rotate for the camps that's a little mini game setting yourself up so that your ability hits every minion in that camp another little mini game it, it's mm -hmm. just the deadlock is just an, an entire series of little mini games that you can get proficient with and you can focus on getting like i'm going to focus on getting camps at the correct times of this match and then you focus that enough once you got it down you move on to i'm going to focus on better movement now and if you keep doing that and in incremental steps you will get better and better at the game even if you're a 44 year old broken veteran with brain injuries like <laughs> me you can still get pretty decent at deadlock i wouldn't say good but i'm decent no i i, I completely agree and i think they're, they give you the tools too to know or practice those things when you want to practice them too even outside mm -hmm. of just a match right you got the sandbox you've got the private matches you've got all of those things that you can practice and do that with and i think that's super beneficial in and of itself one thing that i'll say my final thought is that on the patch is that i love that every patch almost every single hero if not every single hero gets a tweak of some mm -hmm. kind right out of the i think it's 22 heroes now it's either 22 or 23 right 20 out of 23 of them get a change and even then sometimes it is all of them getting a change and they're not little onesie twosie changes like this one they had almost a wall for each and every single hero and it was just like okay everybody's getting changed like they are flipping it on its head to an extent for the number of changes that people were getting and i think that's just a super great thing to see it shows that they're super active and they care about what's going on with every hero not just some of the problem children here and there I just have to say something really quick because I just saw it again. It's that Yamato clip. And after Yamato gets in there, Perry steals it, gets killed. There's one of the players, I don't know which champion it is, just kind of like stands and looks around like, what the heck just happened? I love it. It's just like I can feel myself in that game. I can feel all of the emotions of everybody who experienced that moment. And I, I just love that clip. That's such a good clip. I, I'm pretty sure the one that was standing there looking around was me on Infernus because I was like, what the mm -hmm. hell? There are five of us in here. How did we not get this? <laughs> no, amazing play by her. And afterwards, it doesn't show because the UI is turned off, but she threw a smiley face into the on into the L oh, chat because so why wouldn't you at that point? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> no, so good. Amazing. Well, guys, that's going to be the end of this week's Locked In. This is the second one. Appreciate it. And yeah, we'll see you all next week.